Josh Gordon crushes the field sobriety test. <laughs> Just looks huge out there. That's a great opening line. Look tremendous. The f- field sobriety test. Whoops, we had Big Co's mic mic <laughs> muted. Huge. Oh, yeah. He's back. All right. So he comes out there. He gets the Corey Coleman treatment. He gets 11 targets. He sees four catches. This is why you were liking Corey Coleman, not only because you like his big playability and what he can do, but you were liking the fact that old Deshaun Kaiser was locked onto him and just heaving it his way Double digit a whole targets. bunch of times. Yep. You know, he only could usually comes up with five or six of those. Josh Gordon came down with four for 85. Um, looked, could have had more. Could have had more. A uh, couple if, missed touchdowns. And if catches. Kaiser was a little bit better of a quarterback. Um but Jesus, that's if that's four for eighty, discussion. if that's four for eighty-five and two touchdowns, mm. this dude's getting you two first-round picks right now. Yeah. Well, yes. I guess I guess that's the conversation we're we're heading into here is is kind of placing Gordon's value. This is we're recency bias at its best. Uh, some people just picked him up for free. Maybe somebody's been holding him for a little while. Um, where, well, I guess where do you place the value on this guy? What really? I'll, I'll lead with this. What really sparked this is I saw a Twitter poll. And it was eighty to twenty in favor of Josh Gordon, Josh Gordon or Devontae Parker. Wow, eighty twenty, Josh Gordon over Devontae Parker. Yeah. After I pressed the Parker button just to boost just boost the stats in the <laughs> other direction. I'm not sure if I really feel that way or not. That's why we're here. What do you guys think? Who wants to take this first? Well, the field sobriety test did look good. <laughs> the yeah. eye test looked real good. I, I mean, th- there was I saw this one thing on Twitter. It said, I, you know, as soon as Josh Gordon hits the field, he's going to be worth a first round draft pick. And he was like, it's and it already happened or something like that. I'm not a big Twitterer, but Twitterer. It, it it's that's what happened. I mean, when you see this guy on the field, he. He looks big, fast, and strong, and he's he catches a lot, catches most of the things. That obviously, he's, he only caught four out of eleven, but that's because he had a really good defense draped all over him all game long, yeah. and he still looked big and strong. He's led and, he's led the league in in receiving yards. Yeah, like over sixteen hundred. Yeah. Right, he's done that before. This is not something that you're trying to guess on. Like he, that was two thousand thirteen, and he's still only twenty six. It's crazy. Right, exactly. This is not about can he do it because we've already seen him as a second year player in the league be as good as anybody. This is hammered for me as far as like yeah, <laughs> exactly hammered, but sober, <laughs> drunk and high, and all that good stuff. Yeah, he. This is about trust as far as value goes this is like do do, do you trust that he's going to be able to play a couple of games without getting suspended for life you he's know one, he's one little little puff away from <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is do you, do you trust the yeah, fact but Goodell was super impressed that that's got to go a long way it, right what i think it goes a long way that he made it back yeah Let, let's yeah. be honest I mean, where's here? justin blackman raise your hand where's yeah, justin exactly <laughs> exactly raise your hand it's really hot or drinking a 40 <laughs> really high yeah. i don't yeah. know if that's yeah. where he is that's right. not right <laughs> we should do a 30 for 30 on those two <laughs> finding <laughs> justin blackman <laughs> right but if you thought that actually if you really really seriously look inside yourself and thought that this dude Josh Gordon was going to play another down in the NFL raise your hand I don't see any hands like I really I didn't think he's coming back but he did he's so and and one of the thing that I think the biggest thing that make that makes me think this dude is for real now is because when you turn that corner and you're like all right let me tell everybody about how bad it really was. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. let me let me tell everybody the truth. Yeah. Because obviously he's like, man, I was I was doing this, I was doing, and I didn't read it yet. I just hear hearsay. But like everything that he did, I was drunk, I was high, I was whatever for the games. I, you know, like when you turn that corner to, you're like, hey man, let me tell you about my old me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you're if, Ryan Leaf in it. Right. Exactly. Exactly. If Not he's, that he was on the Ryan Leaf level. Right. right. But but so so do you trust that this is sincere, or do you trust do you trust that he's going to be able to get some game checks and control himself you know there's so there's tons of question marks here and whether or not he can play the game at an elite level is not the question right and i i think what's i mean and i think that all that kind of speaks for itself is that he got himself back here yeah uh, you know that's he wants it he wants it dug out of the hole that was know, a deep hole he he spent his time hanging out with johnny Manziel. yeah he spent his time doing <laughs> whatever the hell he was doing he spent his time drunk on the field yeah he knows he's been down all those roads and and now he's he's come to realization that this is where he wants to do this is where he wants to be well maybe not cleveland right, but, <laughs> right. not much you can do about that um, but but yeah so he he is stuck in cleveland for another year because we think that we right. tried to find out this contract situation and it's basically been told for two or three years so he's still on that rookie deal yeah 
So and right, because he keeps getting suspended and unless they and trade him, him back, he's he going to be here next year. I think it takes six games to qualify, right? And so he's there until next year, unless they trade him. Um, so let's start with what do you think about Corey Coleman on the other end of this thing? I thought it was super weird that Hugh Jackson like went out of his way to tell everyone how much work Josh Gordon was going to get. Like, I, if I was thinking to myself, like if I was Corey Coleman, I feel a little slighted by that because I've like been the man here. I'm the one getting the work, and now they got. Now I've been Josh over here in back. shitty Cleveland. <laughs> Just, right, right. So like I. But but then I'd be I'd, I'd but then I'd feel okay being able to bank on the fact that me and this QB are boys and like I'm the one getting these targets. But then I mean then you see then you see Gordon get all these tar- like it, it. I'd like to say that I like Josh Gordon out there for Corey Coleman. I like these this duo of wide receivers. Like there's plenty of awesome duos in the NFL that can succeed and that you want a part of. But like most of those dudes have some kind of quarterback right to him that's the biggest problem here and that's really what it hinges on like i'm still a big believer in Corey coleman and his talent and everything but like if they no like the chance shift here no chance kaiser can support more than one real wide receiver asset here i mean I, it I, is, I don't believe it's still really early it is but i mean what do you think the chances are that he's even the starting quarterback next year he looks the same how guy often he's have been you seen this brown's carousel go round and round right it doesn't seem like he's evolving as a player much like watching this game it just seemed like he still just want to chuck it deep every single time like and when you got Corey coleman and josh gordon maybe that's not the worst formula yeah you but a i mean a better vertical passing game and the joku right joku coming on strong uh, but I I don't know I don't I'm not it doesn't do too much for me in the value of Corey so Coleman. So well, well, before you jump in there one one more second, let's say Corey Coleman has another game with a goose egg on the board. Do you go after Corey Coleman? Absolutely. Why not? Why not? Like you you don't know if Josh Gordon's going to be in Cleveland long. You don't know if Josh Gordon's going to stick around in the NFL passing test continuously. And, you know, and and I'm not going to Jared Goff, Deshaun Kaiser. It's still the Browns. So, and they're still, they're 0 and 12. Like, the, you know, there's some things that Kaiser was doing good in the preseason. You got preseason. You got a, you know, rookie quarterback. You got hope. You, you know, all that stuff. The Browns have no hope. That's, that was gone eight games ago. Maybe a new season, uh, potentially a new quarterback. I mean, coach, potentially new offensive coordinator. You don't know what's going to happen. Like you said, it's the Browns. So what the Browns look like six months from now, none of us have any idea how that's going to look. So I don't want to Jared Goff to Sean Kaiser because Kaiser couldn't. I like the fact that he's flinging it deep just because that means he ain't scared to. You know, you pick yeah. pick, pick the side of the fence you're going to stand on. I don't mind that Deshaun Kaiser's still out there slinging it deep. They're 0-12, 0-10, 0-12. They don't have anything to lose. Um so, but I mean, it's, well, I, I would I would say the difference. Like, I watched a fair amount of Jared Goff. I've watched a fair amount of Browns Kaiser. It's, it does. It's not those. I don't think those guys were. I just are picked the, him as a guy are, that right, we buried know, after one year because well, no, no, no. a lot of bad. No, stuff. They buried after one year. I buried him. I'll be, oh, I buried him. Jared Goff. Middle I, didn't bury I buried him. him too. I, didn't, I was over here sitting on the other end of the couch going. <laughs> that east and west thing was another really guy. Me. It's not his fault. It's not his fault. <laughs> no, it's not no. his fault. But Ka- Kaiser doesn't. I don't believe that Kaiser has those. Th- that he's not a. Obviously, he went in the first round or whatever. But second, he, he didn't have that same kind of pedigree as Goff had. Isn't the same kind of quarterback. Hell, the guy couldn't even be the starter for his own team by the end of the year. Um. He's he's big, athletic, and he's got a he's got an arm. Yeah, a uh, cannon. Well, if he can, you know, we'll cannon. see if, if he can be developed. But I I wouldn't put him in the same category as Jared Goff. But I understand what you're saying. Um, so I I don't know. I what do you think about Corey Coleman? You you don't get to just sit over I, there and ask all the questions. I really like Corey Coleman. I'd I'd be doing everything I could to put Corey Coleman on my team. Yeah, especially if somebody seems at all down with whatever's going on over there in Cleveland. Uh, I I think he's a good player. I think he's dynamic. It's not his fault. It's not like he's bad, so he's not getting the ball. Eventually, well, I say eventually, they'll figure it out, but they haven't figured it out yeah. in a while. Um, now, I wanted to blame this bad game for Corey Coleman on like the Chargers defense, which, I mean, the Chargers defense is balling out right now, pretty lights out. Yeah. But it wasn't like it was just Casey Hayward on him the whole game. Like I, I went back and I was like pausing game pass to try and figure out where these corners were and what they were doing, and like they were – they were switching up sides they were playing on. They were switching receivers that they were playing yeah. on. They were just switching everything up. So it wasn't – and, like, Josh Gordon beasted 
Casey Hayward a few times. Like, not too many people are getting the upper hand on Casey Hayward, and he was getting behind him. So, like, that that to me is like, man, Josh Gordon is immediately back. Like, yeah. Well, before uh, we get off of, of Corey Coleman and back to Josh Gordon, what, I mean, would you have, rather have, like, a Marquis Lee or Corey Coleman? Uh, that's an interesting question, especially because the stat that I got for uh, Corey Coleman, the last time he played good a couple weeks back, uh, he goes six for 80 against the Jaguars, mm-hmm. which is a very tough team to go six for 80 against. I don't care what you yeah, that was Yeah, that was coming back off his injury. Exactly. So, like, this, this, the Corey Coleman value has been as roller coaster as anybody. You know, he, everybody remembers last year he comes in, he does, has a huge game, breaks his hand, goes out, you know, plays a couple good games, breaks his hand, goes out, comes back, has one monster game, hurts something else, goes back out. This year, start slow, whatever, in and out of the lineup. Six for six for 80 against the Jags. He's great again. And then, you know, Josh Gordon's here, and he's getting 11 targets. I, I'm with you, Casey. I would definitely look into Josh Cole, I mean, Corey Coleman for that guy that's good, easily swayable by the one-week recency bias. You know, everybody. It, the NFL can get you from week to week. Plenty you, of fantasy you players can, out there. You can go from an A to a C in one week and back from a C to an A player in one week, one more week. Mm-hmm. So it's up and down every single week in the NFL. I wouldn't mind having Corey Coleman, the talent on my team either. What what receiver has been consistent in the Browns uniform? Josh Gordon was probably the in last 2013. One. You know what? What you know? Whatever. Josh Gordon's good season was the last season of any good Browns receiver anyway. So I just wanted to throw that part in there. I, Corey Coleman's got me a little perplexed just because moving forward, if next year comes around and he's on the fe- uh, on the team with Josh Gordon, they're together. Like you said, Jay Wayne, not a problem to have two good, really, really type A receivers out there, but you don't have the guy to distribute the ball. If if they're going to go 12 targets a game to Josh Gordon, like anytime Josh Gordon plays, that's how he gets the ball. They chuck it to him. He's just not been available for three years. They bring in Kirk Cousins, though. Boom. And, and have those two guys on their squad all of a sudden. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden, it could be it could be really awesome over there, and that's how that's how quickly you know things could change. Yeah. Um, so back to the question. Marquise, Marquise Lee. Lee or Corey Coleman. It, Give me more. I guess I guess Marquise Lee. I, I looking at my rankings. I have Marquise Lee one spot above Corey Coleman right now. Uh, Marquise Lee's balling out like just straight annihilating people. Like right, and he's got freaking Blake, Blake Bortles Again, throwing not, him the not, ball. Not a not a great QB per se throwing him the ball. But they either. could have somebody else there next year Absolutely. too. Absolutely. So yeah, if, if you put put me up against the wall right now, I would go Marquise Lee. But I, I'm. That's just one spot ahead where I have Corey Coleman. Like Corey Coleman, he got to Like I made an, this argument before, I guess about Jamal Williams, and 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 he could potentially be in this muddied backfield and it'd be a headache. But like I'm banking on the talent and and the the ability to play football. And obviously, Jamal Williams doesn't have like the talent from an athletic standpoint as Corey Coleman, but like they both have like they've shown me that they can play on the NFL field. And just because it's a little muddy there with another wide receiver in a bad quarterback situation, like this is dynasty. I'm going to bank on this talent, and if it's if yeah. it's Corey Coleman is is dropping in value because of this, then that's the time to pounce on Corey Coleman because I, I I love Corey Coleman. Yeah, uh, let me let me say uh, let me go let me grab Marquise Lee in this argument. Uh, this past week, great bounce back with the Colts. Seven Three for, years older, I'll just throw that out. Okay, well, 7 for 86 in a touch. Coming off of the week against Patrick Peterson. And Larry Fitzgerald can tell you about how much fun that is. Um, he well, did no, get on, Patrick Peterson. No, they're on the same team. He got Jalen Ramsey. That's what it was. So well, uh, Fitz is going against uh, Peterson in practice. So True. So, so Marquis Slee goes to the old one for... 13 yards against Patrick Peterson comes back the next week against the Colts. Great game. Before that, eight for 75 and a touch, six for 55 and a touch. So Lee's out there. He's getting the number one receiver type targets in Jacksonville, which aren't necessarily double digit targets because they want to run the ball 35 times a game. But he's he's there. And Corey Coleman, with him in and out of the lineup, with the injuries and all, obviously Marquise Lee started his career very slow with injuries. And he's and, been banged up this and, year, too, but Casey's, he's playing through Casey it. Casey stood by his boy saying how good he wanted Marquise Lee, how good he thought he could be when he was finally healthy. And here here he is. Look at him. So I want to grab the consistency that I've seen out of Marquise Lee this season. Toward the end of the season last year, after everybody was trying to figure out what happened to Allen Robinson, 
I, I, I remember thinking that Marquis Lee looked like the best wide receiver on the field for the Jags last year, and then it came to fruition this year. He's on pace for a, for a very nice season in a run-heavy offense, turnaround team. Jags are going to the playoffs first time in forever, and I just I'm, let me stick with the guy that looks like he's the guy. Yeah, and I can't really hold that that Arizona game against him. Like, there's not too many wide receivers that I'm playing against Patrick Peterson. It was like, a good bench game. It was right. if you're, if obviously, especially with no Allen Hearns. Exactly, so there was nobody for them to even worry about. It was like, a good game to put Marquise Lee on the bench. Unless it's your, unless it's one of your studs. Like, I'm probably shying away from dudes that are going to get Patrick yeah. Peterson because he's traveling and playing pretty well. So you got Allen Robinson and Marquise Lee, who I believe both will be free agents at the end of this season uh does that i guess that would probably if anything help yeah help sounds your, awesome uh, situation <laughs> <laughs> although i think i don't think blake bortles will be the quarterback there next year right. i think i'm feeling a little eli manning coming on I, I don't know like that just makes makes a lot of sense they got to keep one of those guys around right yeah well first of all if you're the jags so i don't see what the problem is with hanging on to 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 uh blake bortles i mean he's a young dude he's got he's plenty mobile enough to run some play action bootleg off of off of Leonard Fournette and look at the turnaround I mean yeah he's not tearing up the stat sheet but his his freaking fantasy points look nice every week and the Jags are eight and four and headed yeah, to the you, playoffs well the Jags are a, a one, one year turnaround team you got a great defense and you got an improving offensive line for the first time in a long just to say that is great for the Jags and you got some a receiver that's staying healthy, and you got a, a top five running back pick that's definitely not underwhelmed. I'm very impressed with what the Jags, have, the team, the Jags have been able to put together, and I don't think that it's necessarily a lack of Blake Bortles' talent or capability. I think it's in his head. Anytime he gets down, he's he's not going to play well. He loses. He I, I just don't want a dude that's going to lose confidence like that. I want sure. the dude that's going to have there. that short like that short memory and and get over the down but not, times but not many people sorry to cut you off not many quarterbacks go from 40 touchdowns to you're benched and you're not our quarterback anymore in one calendar year like Blake Bortles did so I, I feel I know exactly what you just said I feel you on that but this is a great rebuild year for Blake Bortles it's not over yet he goes out there next week and you know next three weeks and throws 17 picks and ruins the playoff chances for the Jags he's out of town it ain't over he's yet. out of town there is either way no chance he's coming back to this team and they're gonna let him be their franchise quarterback not a they shot got too not much this, going on yeah not with this defense and not with the potential that they could possibly be like there he's winning games and not playing in garbage time anymore because this defense has flip-flopped yeah like, i don't think there's i don't think you can say there's no chance he's not coming there, back i could i i would i'll bet whatever you want that he's not their starting quarterback next season this, i mean if they have a bet if they find a better option i just don't see they're gonna draft one or, or or pick somebody else up there's no way they'll let this guy come back and be their quarterback next year i think they're he's just, just not there's i think tom he's coming Coughlin, around there's no way tom coughlin's gonna be like yep we're gonna go into next season and blake bortles is gonna be our guy no 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 i didn't say they're not gonna try and look i mean i don't think they're gonna go spending top I, well first of all they're not gonna have a top five pick because they've did, they did put together a good team. This is not a team that they just drafted out of nowhere and it took them seven years to build. They went and signed, they paid money for the last couple of years on defense and they actually hit a couple. And that's good for them because a lot of people take the Miami Dolphins, for instance. You know, they went and paid Sue and they had a couple other guys on the defense that they thought were going to step up and the team just crumbled. Well, plus you bring in Calais Campbell, plus yep. you bring in uh, AJ Boye. Great pick. You get free agencies couple years in a row they hit it and it was good players i feel i feel uh back at home right now we started on josh gordon and now we're back when we're on the jags we got some jags talking there solid with some black portals right how can you not talk about the jags man they're so they're so intriguing right now that's true so what are you doing (laughs) casey marquis lee or Corey coleman i'll I'll, i think i'm i would take marquis lee as well uh i think in this in this situation scenario yeah um what about uh, I, I like he he's as dynamic as Corey Coleman is I I think um, he is a little older but you know he he's he's seemingly fighting through injuries this season and staying on the field and being pretty consistent 
I do think that if the roles are reversed and Corey Coleman was in Marquise Lee's situation, that he could be doing the same thing. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So maybe, you know, it's kind of a coin flip. I think. Except could, play through injury, maybe. I think you could have him kind of where you, where you just said when you started this whole thing probably five minutes ago we'll by start now. Started this. How mm-hmm. you have him, you know, a spot or two apart from each other and yeah. the, those could jockey for position kind of going back. I mean, Kirk Cousins goes down to Jacksonville. Give me all the Marquise Lee I can get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or Eli Manning. Like, any, like, I, I'm sure. just not Blake Bortles. So, so we've been all over the place here. Let's go yeah. back to Josh Gordon. We're going to bring it all the, all the way back around. All right. And we'll start with the original question that prompted this entire conversation. Devontae Parker or Josh Gordon, who you got? Give me Josh Gordon. Give me Josh Gordon. Whole table what? of Josh Gordons? You do? Uh, no. I want Devontae Parker. No, I thought I'd be the I, only one it, here. I've... I've I would. I'm in. I'm a Devonte Parker. Er, I like that. He's. I'm in his camp. I'm a Parker. <laughs> Parker. I'm a Parker. Uh, I'm in his camp. But <laughs> I mean, I, I at this point, without obviously, um, you, the the Dolphins will have a new quarterback next year, no matter what. So I I don't know what that's going to look like. Wait, like you, you won't. You'll give Bortles the nod, but you won't give Smoking Jay. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I'd rather Tannehill. have Bortles over Eli Tannehill. Manning at this point. But let me go back. Yeah, probably yeah, so. Let me let me get. Oh yeah, forgot let, about that guy. Yeah. Let me get He's the guy. <laughs> let me get Josh Gordon, the guy who is one mistake away from never playing again. Let me gamble that on the upside, the, his extreme upside over. Whatever. Parker's a gamble too. He is because he like, hasn't. Sh- like he's flashed. He's flashed and he looks his awesome at times. Look good, but. He, to me, the, especially the way he's the, the the quotes that come out in the from the team, and he needed to be more professional, and now he is this year, and then the wheels fall off for the Dolphins. So I don't I don't know if it's a coincidence that the Dolphins season goes down to hit, hit down the tank, and then also Devonte Parker's out there getting one catch, hardly caring. I don't think he's healthy either. Yeah, he's I don't, definitely I don't, not. It's hard to tell when these dudes are banged up and when they're like really hurt. Yeah, like nicked up versus banged up, and. Mm-hmm. He just seems to his nicks turns into bangs. Like he just yeah. When he's when he's hurt, he's not he's not at that top level. And he's and, not. And, and you've seen Josh Gordon be at the top level. Yeah, right. So, we've seen yeah. like we've seen Josh Gordon be where we want Devonte Parker to get to. So True. Let, let's stick with the, another uh, Devonte. Let's go Devonte Adams, who's in a contract year could could possibly be going somewhere else. Who I think uh, old Big Co turned a corner on this year, or Josh Gordon. Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams, who you got? Devontae Adams. All right. It's just safety. Yeah. Devontae Adams could poof poof and he's out for four games. <laughs> and then and he's got You mean you mean Josh Gordon? No. No, no. no Devontae no. Adams could oh, Devontae do, Adams, Devontae oh, Adams right, could right, start four making games. Right. He, he could, could post the video of him in a gas mask and <laughs> yeah. only be out for four. Maybe <laughs> yeah. just one. He could yeah. get that thing appealed down Maybe to just one. Two. That wouldn't right. be. That wouldn't right. be. Devontae yeah. Adams is starting from on a fresh slate right. and and Gordon's one away. Yeah, so I'm taking Adams, and Adams just. Ad, I did. Casey hit the hell on the nail on the head, or the head on the nail. That I I was hit the hammer I, on the nail. I I doubted. I doubted Devonte Adams. I know what he did last year, but a Rodge is a Rodge, and but this year with a Rodge going out and the things that he's been able to do with Hunley. Well, Hunley loves him. They like I don't care. They're you like, still got to catch it. You still got to yeah. get the separation. You still got to put yourself in the spot. And the catch. yak too, man. You still you, you got I have really come a long way on Devontae Adams in the last couple of months. I really have. I was down on him, had him in yeah, a Yeah, I couldn't talk you into him no, a couple couldn't spots. Couldn't talk me into him. <laughs> and now I'm all about him just because I just I'm impressed with the kid. I've been you know? I, I benched him after the whole a Raj thing, and now I've been playing him every week because he got to because it's just you know why not? He had three for forty some at the beginning of that game. He ended up only catching one more ball last week, but mm-hmm. he's been he's been really solid. So I, I would probably go with Devonte Adams as well. I was a little concerned with you, not as much of him possibly going somewhere else and Rogers being the guy who got him to that twelve touchdown threshold, which is definitely true. But oh, yeah. it's nice to see him being a very startable receiver with a backup quarterback. You you Devonte Adams? Yeah, yeah okay. I said that. Let's let's run through two or three more. How about your boy Crabtree or Josh Gordon? That's <laughs> oh. <laughs> most chains lost in the NFL. <laughs> chain that's snatcher. That's too soon. That's too soon. <laughs> most chains lost. That is what as a what stat you don't want to be leading. 
That is so funny. Why are you wearing funny. a chain anyway? That is so funny. And then you tried to tape it to your chest. Yeah, what? Is that what happened? Yeah. yeah he tried, tried to a, tape it to his chest in the locker pre-game. room pregame. So it trying be, to prepare so it for to leave to come after that. No. Oh, he yeah. ripped off the tape chain? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> to leave. Needs a, just for that reason? Should have got gorilla tape. That would have never happened yeah. if he had gorilla tape. <laughs> just for that reason, I'm <laughs> taking Josh tape. Gordon. Because I was going Crabtree, but I didn't know he tried to tape the chain down. <laughs> Hey man, I'm out. On and then you go tree. fighting to do with your helmet off. Like, That's put your stupid helmet back too. On. He got his I'm, chain taken and his helmet taken I'm, off. Yeah, if you didn't tell me about the tape, I'm still I'm out on Crabtree from the tape. <laughs> I I don't put up with shit like that. I'm, <laughs> I'm ridiculous. Just, I'm not deal with this. He tried to tape the chain. Get, give me, get, give get me, rid of him. get rid of him. Give me a four or five year younger Gordon uh, uh, over Crabtree. Yeah. Yeah, Crabs is thirty. Crabs one more chain away from you know <laughs> yeah. being out for the season I, for the can, fight. Your pride has just had you just have to have none of that left, yeah. right? Like I you didn't just know got so disrespected. Or he thinks he thinks he has so much pride is what the problem is, and that he's just not going to be disrespected. I'll buy another chain. Yeah, he's I don't need ridic- that chain. The whole thing's ridiculous. I didn't mind. Talib's out there like two chains. Yeah, I I. I, I I thought it was funny to leave jerk the chain off again. Hilarious. I thought it was hilarious. I, but usually I, I pissed now with this off whole by that shit. That was very entertaining. This whole re- revelation, revelation. revelation. This whole tape revelation that Crabtree Tree tried to tape it and then he still got it pulled off, which is even better. Good for so Tlaib. You just got punked. Well, with all this being said, a Crabtree could be a guy who has double digit touchdowns well into 34, 35 years old. But uh, yeah, I'm, taking no crab, chain. I'm taking crab. I'm taking. I'm taking Crabtree for the cheap next year. He'll be on a lot of my teams for real cheap because yeah. this well, whole chain thing. Cheap. We're he's going to be disrespected. We're, we're going uh, when you get value. I'm in, but just, right. just player to player. I'll, I'll take the younger Gordon guy or with, Crabtree with a huge ceiling who could be you know a top five pick at the end of. But, t- but Crabtree is ridiculous. All right, one more. Cra- G- uh, uh, Juju Smith Schuster, Josh Gordon. Well, I mean, I think I was. I was probably the highest on Juju before, at least maybe not in the off season, but right before the season ramped up through the preseason. I was probably the highest out of this group on Juju Smith Schuster. I think I, I think I I don't know. I kind of want some Juju in my life. Yeah. Although I really What's not like about Juju at this point. Well, the fact that he laid Vontez Burke effect out, which I like, but then he just stood over him like it. That was the heat of the moment. He shouldn't have done that. He'll learn from that. That's why he didn't. That's why he's getting that suspension. Like yeah, he t- exactly. Towered he over definitely him. He probably would have suspended. appealed that down. He right. Would not have if he yeah. didn't do that. Um. I. I. I ever, anybody that's ever heard me on this program before knows that I'm a. I'm a. I'm against wide receivers and rookie drafts. And obviously, so that makes that makes Juju not one of my favorite players going into rookie draft season. And for the most part, first round rookie wide receivers stand up. Juju's the only one that makes me look wrong in that argument. You know, obviously, long term is still you know Corey, um, uh, what's his name for the Titans is still awesome. Corey Davis. Corey Davis is still awesome. But I mean, you haven't been able to start him this year, and. John Ross is nowhere to be seen, that kind of thing. Healthy scratch. But Juju's freaking awesome. Mike Williams got hurt. And Just turned 21. Yeah, Juju's freaking awesome. I love the way he plays the game. He's so physical. I love that about him. Great I like, blocker, I want, which also I want some Juju in there. my life. But that's that's that was my point all off season long was it was a one out of five. It's basically been, you know, futures, tons of careers ahead of us here. But my point was I didn't want any of those guys because I didn't know which one was going to be Juju. And Juju's the you know yeah. Cooper Cup. Juju's freaking Juju's <laughs> awesome. I like I like Juju a lot, and I want him on my team now. I just didn't want to take that stab at the beginning. Look at all those running backs you could have stabbed at through the first round. If one of them was towards the end, back into the first round was named Alvin Kamara, your team's in the playoffs. Yeah, that's true. Well, we've been all over the place. We've been to Miami. We've been to Jacksonville. We've yeah. been to Oakland. <laughs> Frequent been, flyer miles racking up. Yeah. You we've been all over the miles. place. I, I think <laughs> I think we need to land this thing, get back on solid ground, get our feet uh, uh, back underneath us, and, and take it to the next topic.